What if there's some invention that doesn't get invented because some guy decides that he doesn't want to go down this path? Engineering has made our lives so much better in the last hundred years. What if it's the people we're training today that become the people that manage the engineers 60, 70 years from now that bring our standard of living to the rest of the world? What it has allowed me to do is grow. Growth in knowledge, growth in people, growth in people that work for me and work with me, growth in opportunity. Go out and do something amazing. Try something new. Be better at what you are. Challenge yourself. What they miss out on is the opportunities to really impact and change the world. Hi, I'm Zane with Zane Engineers Life. Today we've got a special guest in. His name is Dave Hodges. He's a registered professional engineer. He runs his own engineering company and he wants to help people. So Dave, I'll just give you a second. Just give us a quick little intro of you. Maybe tell us a little bit about you and your company and maybe what led you to starting your own company. So just a little bit about me. I went the same path a lot of engineers take. Uh, got out of university, immediately found a job in structural engineering. Tried a lot of different things before I uh, decided uh, I had something that I was really passionate about. And when I found that, got enough experience and got enough uh, networking, got enough mentors, got the like, point where I was able to go out on my own. It's this little small mom and pop company. Uh, we're not big. Uh, we don't do skyscrapers. We're not doing the next big building in, in Dubai, but we do a lot of those small mid-sized projects. And we're profitable, we're successful, and now that I've gotten here, I really see a lot of bright engineers out there. I would love for them to get out of the stuck feeling they're in and get them into something that is a whole new experience. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Um, could you talk for a minute, Dave? What is owning your own company? What has it allowed you to do? How has it impacted your life? And mainly, you know, like when you were first getting started, what did you think the big challenges were going to be for doing this? So, first of all, what it has allowed me to do is grow and not. I mean, personal growth, obviously, growth as an engineer, sure. Growth in knowledge, growth in people, growth in people that work for me and work with me, growth in opportunity. There's literally no end to the opportunity and the growth that you're going to see when, when, when you go through with this. Obviously, a lot of people who are doing regular wage jobs, especially at larger engineering firms or perhaps engineering firms where they're doing the same thing over and over again, the idea of growth is kind of like a, a pipe dream. You know, maybe you learn about the latest code that handles this small, tiny calculation that you've done every year for 10 years in a row or something like that. But you really don't get the opportunity outside of a few very particular firms to go out and do something amazing. Try something new. Be better at what you are. Uh, challenge yourself. The fear is that I'm going to go out on my own. I'm not going to be good enough. I'm not going to be smart enough. I'm not going to have the business. I'm not going to have the clientele. Those are all legitimate concerns to have. I've been in business 10 years. I've never been in want for work. Not one year have I had a place where I said, oh no, I'm not getting enough work. And this is what I think structural engineers don't understand. There is so much work out there for us. Right, so the initial fear is, hey, you know, who are gonna be my first clients? Am I gonna right. be able to eat? Can I pay my bills? Can I make enough money to replace what I make as a salary in this Correct. comfy job that has benefits and all those kind of things, right? But if you come back for just a minute, how has it like impacted your life? What are some of the things that you're able to do working for yourself, maybe for you or your family or for others that you weren't really able to do when you were working the standard nine to five job? Well, I have an interesting principle. It may be controversial, but one of the principles of my business is you work for rich people so that you can help poor people for free. One of the things that I could never do when I was um, working for, you know, a typical typical wage job in a big, big corporation, you know, my license was kind of like not really mine to use how I wanted. Now I can step into charity projects. I can find little Miss Watson down the road who's threatening to have threatened to have her power cut off if she doesn't get something up to code really fast, and she needs someone to rescue her. Hey, I can do that. I can wow. teach more often. I can. I can go to building officials and go to bat for people's cases when some code regulation is keeping a person from having his livelihood taken away from him. All of these things are possible when you're out on your own. Obviously, yeah, you make more money, more time with your wife and kids. Um, but more than that is a bigger world out there. 
And I think big corporations, especially your larger engineering firms, as the bigger they get, it seems the smaller the world is for the people that work for them. So we've talked about for a second, you know, there's a lot of cool things that you can do now that you're you're on your own. Let's go back to that moment before you kind of got started. What did you think the big challenges were going to be? And then how were you wrong? What were the things that were keeping you from getting started? And now when you're on the other side of it, do you see how you were completely off base? Obviously, the biggest challenge is, hey, when do you take this leap? There are wrong times to take the leap. And I think that I would have been wrong to take the leap before I did. And knowing that there are things you can objectively measure for when to take the leap, that's important. So some of those fears, some of those concerns are completely legitimate, but we need to be able to mitigate those and say, when can we say that's not a valid concern anymore? So obviously my first concern was not going to have enough work. I go out on my own. I don't get my steady paycheck. That matters. That's important. Now, after a decade working in the industry, I've realized that's the least of my concerns. There is also the concern of just going into the unknown. Engineers, you could put a technical problem in front of a good engineer. He's in his zone. He is happy to be there. He's got codes. He's got references. He's got mathematical models. All these things at his disposal. And if not, he's got a, he's got someone he knows that can that knows more than he, him, and he can help him do it. Put an engineer into start your own business. Well, it's not like there's an ASME standard that they can look up an equation and be like, here's exactly when to start your business. Sure. That code requirement doesn't exist. Well, but that doesn't mean you can't put some math and some science into understanding this. And my hope is that with a few metrics, you can get out there and say, hey, is my financial situation good? Is my income decent enough? Do I have a good chunk of the market that I as big of a chunk as I need to go forward? If I got those handled, great. It's time to make the jump. So I was wrong about not having enough work. I was way wrong about my own abilities as an engineer because I thought, well, shoot, I'm smart, right? I'm an intelligent guy. I'll run a business, no problem. There's a lot of stuff to running a business that is not going to be natural to an engineer. But the good thing is engineers are smart. You can figure it out. Um, It's not insurmountable. But just because you're an ace at structural analysis does not mean that you're an ace at running a business. Very well said. Very well said. Well, now that you've been out for, you say, a decade now and you've been kind of doing it, you now have come back and, and and you have a mission now. And I just wanted to give you a second to kind of talk about, like, what is your mission? Are you trying to help people that were in that spot start their own company? What is it that you're trying to do here, Dave? Well, seeing as how I'm overwhelmed with work, I would really love it if there were like 10 more people like me, same passion, same energy, same drive. And people could call me and say, hey, Dave, we really need you on this project. And I can say, hey, you know what? I got three other people in your county that I can refer you to that can take care of you immediately. I don't have that. I have no confidence sometimes in telling people, especially in rural parts of the states where I'm licensed, oh, just call someone locally, you'll find someone. Mm. I might not. Does any, right. Do people realize what an untapped market this is? Everyone needs structural engineers. I want to see the best and brightest people coming out of university realizing that structural engineering isn't just a way to help people. It's also extremely profitable. It's exciting. You get the opportunities that you have are excellent. And I want people to realize that, I guess what I get frustrated with is people who come out of university or get ready to get enrolled and they say, what are the highest paid engineering salaries? And they find, oh, here's mechanical and here's electrical and here's software. It's like, I don't want you thinking like that. That's not the way you should think. You can go into any profession and if you're passionate and good, you're going to make a lot of money. That shouldn't be the issue. What I don't want is people who are interested in structural engineering looking at these salaries and saying, wow, average salary for a structural engineer out of school, $60,000. I'm not doing that. Wow. We're missing out on so much great talent because Mm -hmm. they see this dumb ledger line and think that that's Mm -hmm. what it means. No, I want, I'm on a mission to tell people this is a great industry. And if you have the passion for it, you can be more profitable, more successful than any of your counterparts, with the exception of maybe really intelligent structural engineers. Sure. I'm sorry, software engineers. And, you know, as a part of that, so, you know, someone coming fresh out of school, you've got a few years, you know, four to five years, depending on the state, until you can actually get licensed as an engineer. And that, that is one big barrier to entry here. But I, I don't think you're going after that kid right now on your mission to get them fresh out of school to start their own engineering company because you can't. Who's kind of your target audience here? Who is it you're really trying to, to, to get a hold of and help? 
people who are dissatisfied with where they are at our at their current company and feel like their license has not been a source of growth and livelihood and all of that. Um, sure. Look, let's be real, Zane. There are a lot of people out there who like going to their nine to fives. They come in, they get their cup of coffee, they work their little two, three hour shifts morning and afternoon, and they go home and they get their paycheck every Friday. There are a lot of people who are content to do that. I don't want to talk to them. They're happy. Okay. I want to talk to the people who aren't happy doing that, who want something more, sure. um, but have that passion and drive to say, no, I'm going to go out and make a difference. Uh, those are the people that I want. So Dave's trying to help those people that they maybe they've got their PE license or maybe they're getting ready to take their exam and they're they're working somewhere. They've got some experience and, you know, they're working in the box, so to speak. But they feel like there's more to it, that there's more opportunity there, that there might be something more to it. Or maybe they're completely oblivious to there is more opportunity. And that's really what you're trying to do here. Right, Dave? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think so many people have this idea that structural engineering or civil engineering as a, as a broader thing is a boring, dead end, low paying career path to take. And of course, obviously, you know, you've been doing this in various fields for 20 some years now. There's nothing boring about what we do at all. And I wish more people understood that. Sure. And if you, you can turn it into something where you can kind of do it on your own terms and be profitable at it and make money at it. So you can do things like you said, and then go help people or right. whatever it is your mission is, then then all the more for it. Right. Right. OK. And one of the things that you're putting together here, and that's really kind of the whole reason for our podcast today, you're putting together a live event where you want to help people who are licensed or about to get their license, get their company started. And you've told me that you've basically got a 13 point plan. And now if you're up for it or, uh, and if you're cool with it, why don't we just go through your 13 steps? Like what are these 13 steps to starting your own engineering company? I wouldn't really call them steps. I think they're different aspects that you have to make sure you address before you do it. But let's just go through them one by one. First things first, understanding the value of structural engineering. If you don't understand how valuable structural engineering is, You're always going to sell yourself short and you're going to buy into the lie that it's a boring and useless dead end profession. So the first thing I want to uh, emphasize is how important it is, just like doctors or lawyers or police officers, we are a vital part of a, a working civilization. And so that's the first thing we have to drive home. An engineer who knows how important he is, is going to have more of that drive. The second thing, the importance of networking and how to do it well. We all know it's not what you know, it's whom you know. That's a, It's been said a million times before, but there's ways to network the right way. There's ways to find the people that are going to cause you the most growth. And there's ways of parting ways with people that just aren't going to cut it for you and may, may even dr- drag you down. Learn to identify those directions you want to go with your network. Number three, and this is a big one, initial capital and income requirements. You have to nail this down. You know, if you have a lot of debt, and you have a lot of income requirements, but you don't have the initial capital and you don't have a market share, hey, hold off on taking the jump. But we got to find these metrics and give people direction so that when they jump, they got a good parachute and a good set of wings to go navigate it. Number four, the administrative and business side of starting a firm. Every state's different. And that means that you have a lot of research to do depending on where you are and depending if you want to branch out. I love the 10th Amendment of the United States because it's there for a reason, but it does mean that just because you're an engineer in Alaska doesn't mean you can be an engineer in Florida, nor should you. There's a lot of different things to navigate there. Number five is finding clients and providing value to them, even if they don't hire you. This is a long-term thing that I wish a lot of people understood. One of the things that I learned actually during my days at Phoenix was five minutes on the phone, give it to them for free. And if you do well with that, even if you end up referring the job to someone else, because you helped them, that will stay with them for a long time. So that value added, every time you answer the phone, explain to a customer what they actually need, give them the right direction to go, they're going to be calling you back and they're going to tell their friends about you. Five minutes costs essentially nothing. And that is like firing arrows miles down the road only to find that they're doing work for you that you didn't even see. Number six, diversifying your skill set, tackling new types of projects. 
this is actually part of networking. When you know a lot of people who know more than you and you know how to keep people involved in your life that can help you when you're challenged with something, every time you work with someone else, you're adding to your skill set. You're making your network bigger. You're providing more value to customers. But how do you do that? When you're working for a single engineering firm doing one thing over and over again, you have to actively try to do this. When you're on your own, you get way more opportunities. So how to take advantage of that. Number seven, getting your business noticed, getting your name at the top of the list. And, and by this, I don't mean SEO. I don't mean getting your name on the front page of Google. That doesn't matter. What I mean is getting your name on the top of the list of building officials, on the list of building departments in various states, being noticed, getting your reports into the building officials where they say, hey, we've seen Joe Smith PE on all these reports in the last few months. He seems like he's an active guy in our community. This is how you begin to build relationships. This is how you begin to be number one on anyone's list sure. uh, of people to, people to call. Number eight, price setting and turning a profit on every project. This is something that everyone fails at in the beginning. That's okay, you're gonna fail. Not every project you do this, but you can have a goal to profit on every project. And there are ways of doing that. And part of it involves looking at your previous work, how you've done, what you're getting better at, and recognizing that along this way, you're going to get better and faster at certain things. And then saying, hey, what am I really good at? Why don't I go after more of that kind of work since I love it so much? Number nine, and this is important for anyone who's going to step out on his own. Not everyone's going to start off doing big industrial commercial projects. Let's face it, a lot of your initial income is going to be from residential projects and one-off customers. You're going to treat them very differently from the way you treat your big commercial and industrial clients. Why? Because you get them one time and that's it. The other guys that are builders and contractors and designers, you want to establish long-term relationships sure. with them. So your cost structure is going to be different. Your relationships can be different. How do you navigate those two things? Again, something I like to cover because many engineers walk away from residential stuff because they say, I can't profit by it. And a lot of people might walk away from the commercial industrial stuff saying, it's too much for me, just let me do my little stuff. Well, guess what? You can do both. Sure. Absolutely, you can, but you can't treat them the same way. Number 10 is interacting with building officials. Um, I see my role more and more like a lawyer representing a client. Uh, every year I stay in business. A lot of people sometimes get the idea of, oh, let me just get this engineered. Let me just call an engineer to do this for us. Well, a lot of times what you're really doing is you're going to the building official and saying, hey, my client has a need. And I know you, Mr. Building Official, have a need also. How can I get you what you need and also get my client what they need? And it's important to realize that when we go and approach building officials on things like this, we are representing our client. And they have very good reason to depend on our relationship with the building official. Just like when you hire a lawyer, you hope they know the judge, sure. you hope they know the other lawyer. There's a profound benefit to knowing an inside man. And if you are an engineer and you don't know the building officials in your county, you're at a huge loss. You're missing out on a huge opportunity to help clients. So that is something that I think is extremely important for anyone who intends to be local in the work he sure. does. Number 11, Essential expenses of owning and operating a firm. Oh boy, there are so many of these. You cannot count. This could be a course all unto itself, right? <laughs> you could put together a, a good 300 page volume on random stuff you didn't think you would ever spend money on. You're going to spend money on it, but that's okay because a, there's a lot of there's a lot of indications from previous business owners of what you can expect and how to manage the unexpected ones within a certain range. And then numbers 12 and 13, I mean, I'm kind of depending on you, Zane, to, to, to fill in a lot here, but I want to talk about the key traits of a successful firm. And by sure. that, I mean the firms that continually get called back and do more and more work. What are they doing right? And how do we emulate those things? I've heard a lot of people complain about this or that, whether it was a working experience or a client experience, but those people get called a thousand times a day to take care of people, okay? So whatever complaint we can lodge against them, they're doing something right. What is that? What can we take from that and do better? And what can we say maybe they're doing wrong and kind of not do ourselves? So that's, yeah. that's, that, that's something that is important. And then finally, paths for growth. 
the whole reason we're doing this is because we wanted more. We wanted to grow. We were stuck doing one simple, boring calculation for 10 years. Well, guess what? When you get here, there's still ways to grow. And there's the growth should never stop until you finally get your gold watch and go spend the rest of your days with your grandkids. OK, up until that point, there should be never. And truthfully, honestly, you're still growing. Then you're just not growing the same way. Yeah, sure. So that's those are the 13 points that I hope to cover. And I would think that anyone interested in doing this would find a lot of value in most of those things. So out of that, Dave, we've got basically an event that you're putting together for people to come to live event paid event come in dave's going to walk you through literally step by step how to do each of these 13 things how to get this company started all those kind of things now for the people who aren't going to sign up if i was you know about to get my license have my license maybe i've had my my stamp for a little while and i'm you know looking at going out on my own maybe i'll keep my job while i'm doing it what are the first three things I need to do? First three things you need to do, assess your own finances, assess your specific talents. That is to say, what are, what are your fields of expertise? What do you immediately contribute from yourself that you can do, say, better than other people? And then where does that fit into with your local market? Mm -hmm. um, if you can assess those three things. Now, the, again, the answer may be no, not now. The answer may be down the road. The answer may be, I simply don't have anything. That's fine. Okay. But those are the things you should be looking to. If you can establish those three things, then you can make a really good assessment of whether or not it's time or whether it's getting close to time. I mean, the first thing you want to do is create a little runway, right? So you'd like to minimize your expenses and put a little money back where you literally could go maybe a month, two months, or even a year with no pay whatsoever. And then that um, removes a lot of the fear, right? Because you know yeah. you can at least feed you and your family for that period of time while you're figuring out what you're doing. Your second one was dead on. Figure out what you're good at. And then the, the, the one that goes with that is what can you do to help people? Like what do people actually need that they'd be willing to pay you to do, right? And then I think you're a big proponent of local market. Talk to me about that for a minute. Is it so that you can get in front of them? Is it because you're there? Is it to build the the local establishment of you and helping in your community? What what what's your push for the local connection? My push for the local connection is there are several aspects to it. I think the first thing is short of someone who has five million dollars in capital and a PE license and all these things coming in place, it's hard to get into the very big projects and compete with the Jacobs, the Floors, the CH2M Hills. That's really hard to get your foot in the door on something like that. But that's okay. If you have that aspiration, that can wait. Why don't you put your feet down on the soil where you are right now, get to know the people around you, become someone in the community that people look to and say, hey, we like Jason over there. He's the local structural engineer. He'll help us out. And when you do that, you immediately begin a revenue source that is maybe not huge, but it's a little pipeline. It keeps your sure. lights on every month. It keeps your bills paid, keeps your kids fed, and it slowly it pushes bigger and bigger roots out into where you live. Sure. Obviously, I think that, yeah, we would all chase really huge projects if we could, <laughs> but let's be real. We're talking about individuals going out on their own. Missing out on that local thing is silly when there's so much there especially if you say live in the countryside, you couldn't get a structural engineer into a lot of these counties without travel. And it's very, very difficult for people who live up there. Um, you have a county with 20,000 people. Guess what? That plenty of opportunity for you to get in there and do something and help your community. And all the while they're paying your bills, you've got opportunities to go chase the big white whale, sure. you know, the big project that you really want to go after. Well, I think the part that you're incredibly smart uh, is the the hardest part in the beginning is the customer acquisition cost and method mm -hmm. and you've literally nailed it why not just ask all the people you know if you can help them i mean who yeah. doesn't need a little engineer and like hey i want to take this column out in my basement i want to build a cool deer stand hey can i put this on my car all those kind of things sometimes yeah. just need a little math and science right absolutely and absolutely. i mean there's a second part of that too like if someone gave you an airport to do tomorrow what would you do <laughs> So when gave I'm me probably airport. not going to do an airport, right? Like, no. hey, don't want to do that. Like, that's right. okay. If I wanted to do that, I would go work for Jacobs and Floor and the companies that are doing those kind of Correct. things, right? Yeah. 
you've got a mission to help people. You've got a mission to show people that have their license that there's another way. They don't necessarily have to work in a job they hate and sit in traffic and do all those kind of things. There's other parts of life that they can potentially help people. Um, and you've committed to, to doing that and helping those people. So anyone that actually takes the leap and signs up for your course and signs up for your event, will you help them? What are you going to do for them, Dave? I hope to give them, first of all, the tools they need to assess where they are in their career, the knowledge they need to take that leap without fear, and then from there, the foundation that they need to get their feet firmly planted on the ground after landing and grow. And I should say that I've spent the last seven, eight years mentoring engineers uh, regarding their career paths for free because it's what I like to do. I don't charge for it. I genuinely enjoy doing it. Anyone who came to my course who wanted to be able to get me on my cell phone at any time happily would take the call. That and that it, it, and again, it wouldn't be like I would view that as some sort of loss. No, I I love telling people sure. uh, everything that I know, and I love making people fired up about the potentials of their career, especially after they're beaten down by so many people telling them there's too many engineers and engineers are just a commodity and no 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 let me tell you something it's an amazing world out there but you got to go and grab it so anyone who came to the course even if they were just interested in this and maybe they say i can't make it this year understood you want to just call and talk to me about it i'm open and the other part of it is um there's guys like me and you with engineering companies that as soon as you know jason or mike or whoever it is that's taking your course as soon as they actually get started, we've got tons of work for you. There is so much work out here and so many things available that you literally just need to get started. Like quit yeah. being scared. You've got this. Well, one thing that I will say is in October of 2021, I was diagnosed with cancer and immediately went into surgery and then later cancer treatments and chemotherapy. And there was a girl that I had known for 10, 12 years and just had recently gotten her, her structural engineering license. And I called her up to tell her the bad news. And uh, she said, anything I can do for you? And I said, yeah, you know, you've got your license now. I need you to step up and I need you to start handling my customers. And she said, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And I said, and you're probably going to have to quit your job. And she's like, oh, no, I couldn't do that. And I was like, well, you make your own decision. Four months later, she had to quit her job. I think her gross sales that year went into six figures after about month eight or nine. And that was all based on someone who already had a, way, had a wage job, went out on her own after I told her, just take my referrals. And that's how she did her first year. She's long since quit her job. She's extremely successful. Anyone who calls me from her county, I just say, sorry, Pat, I don't even need to help you. You need to call Amanda over here. It just to explain exactly what you're talking about. So if anyone yeah. says, really, you're just going to load me up with work? Yeah. She's actually doing projects for us as well. So, of course, she is. <laughs> so, actually, you know, she was the guinea pig of this whole thing. I sat her down when she first got out. I had finished chemotherapy. I met with her at a little cafe. We sat and talked, and I gave her these 13 steps in a two hour, like, crash course. And then she called me probably every other day for the next two months as she was kind of getting the feel for all of this stuff. Sure. And she's like, I, I feel bad for calling. I was like, please don't. This is my right. favorite thing. I want to see you succeed so bad. 100%. Um, so that's been, yeah, wonderful. So, I mean, there's your testimonial right there. Anyone that's thinking about doing this or trying to decide if they should take Dave's course or go to Dave's event, you can call her. I mean, the, her whole life person. changed, right? She's coming to the first event no matter what. I've already spoken to her about the concept, and so she's going to be there. The reason I came up with this right here was because of her. And I thought, wow, I've watched this brilliant young woman go from wage slave to badass structural engineer with a license in one hand and a calculator in the other <laughs> in like 12 months making more money and less time with more right. things to do for her family Correct. more fulfillment more ability to do what she wants to do and just a smile on her face compared to the treasury of getting up every day correct right no that, that's literally everything you just described now, Dave, speak to a minute. So um, let's say there's someone out there and they're licensed and they're scared and they're fearful and they just don't know how to get started. What pain are they going to endure if they don't do this, if they don't take this course, if they don't come to this event? Well, if they are 
particularly passionate and if they are particularly interested in growth, what they miss out on is the opportunities to really impact and change the world. Um, I know that I'm not going to engineer every structure in the world. That's not possible, okay? Um, but if I decide I don't want to help people, and there's some brilliant genius somewhere in some rural part of Nebraska, and he doesn't get the message that I have, and he decides, well, it's not worth it. I'm just going to go be a fisherman, or I'm just going to... What if there's some third world country out there that misses out on some amazing aqueduct? What if there's some invention that doesn't get invented because some guy decides that he doesn't want to go down this path? Engineering has made our lives so much better in the last hundred years. And we experience it a lot in the US and UK and Europe and places like that. But what about places where engineering hasn't quite made it? What if it's the people we're training today that become the people that manage the engineers 60, 70 years from now that yeah. bring our our standard of living to the rest of the world? So, you you know, they're, they're, this is more than just, well, I might miss out on a project that pays me $10,000. No, 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 no. You miss out on changing the world and then impacting people's lives. I originally got into engineering, not because I even remotely liked engineering, but I had massive talent in math and science. And I felt if I'm given this ability, I need to do something with it that's for the common good. Now, the cool thing is, after all those years, here I am running an engineering company and doing things that actually matter every day. So for anyone that wants to stay in the office and sit in the traffic and do what they're told and live a life of wondering if there's something bigger you could have done don't come don't sign right. up don't come to dave's course don't ever watch my channel again just stay there and do your thing right you were talking through understanding the value of structural engineering and you and i both know that a lot of people especially in the industry and especially engineers don't understand how important we are and how valuable this is and how lucrative this could be if we can get out of our own way. Can you talk to that just a little bit more? We have the benefit nowadays of living in what we refer to commonly as a civilization or an advanced society, however you want to put it. In order for advanced civilizations to work, there are several key components uh, that have to be there that we expect to be there. Uh, one of those things is the rule of law. You know, we don't expect to find anarchy. We expect to find uh, people following the law. And when they don't, we have recourse to something higher. Uh, that's what makes us, say, different from just, you know, any random barbarian civilization that doesn't have these things. Um, what else do we have? Well, we have infrastructure in place to, take, to protect the public safety. We have hospitals. Uh, we have railroads. We have codes and standards that govern how those railroads and those hospitals should, should behave. Um, when it comes to law, we know that, hey, the government can and often will overstep its bounds. So we hold lawyers in high regard for being able to represent the ordinary man against a very big and powerful entity like the government. And for law, for doctors, obviously, human life is paramount. We, we don't have any problem paying lawyer, paying doctors a lot of money to protect our loved ones, okay? But really, the doctor's only needed if the structural engineer hasn't done his job in some <laughs> cases, right? If we awesome. do our job, we prevent people from, from getting hurt. Uh, you can look at ancient Ottoman Empire, Byzantium, Roman Empire. What were some of the most devastating things to those civilizations? Earthquakes, right? Tsunamis, um, atmospheric events, okay? Where you would have untold losses hundreds of thousands of people in a single event killed okay you cannot maintain infrastructure you cannot maintain law and order you cannot maintain human safety if you do not have a basis of structural engineering going through that society and that's what i'm talking about we're not just here making little gadgets for people or doing little tricks with our calculators no we're an integral part of an advanced civilization and this is what i want people to realize about the value of structural engineering 
Dave, you're really big, and one of your points was working on residential projects, one-off customers, and trying to help people in your local area. I, I get the why from your mission. You want engineers to help people and be a part of society and do things and give back. But talk me through why that could be a good spot to start from a financial perspective and a way to get your first few projects. Well, first of all, in almost all cases, the lowest of low-hanging fruit are the people who have never hired a structural engineer before and they get on the internet and they're like, structural engineers near me, please show me something, right? They're already looking for you. They already need you. They don't have a Rolodex of, oh, let me call Jacobs and see what they can do. They don't have that. They don't even know that they needed one of these until permit office came down and said, hey, stop building that deck until you get it engineered, right? So the local aspect, when it comes to jumping off that, that precipice, that's the easiest place to land. Um, why would you pass up? I mean, it, it's like you're you're going to land, you're going to take the leap, and you're going to find there's already 18 people who are like, mm -hmm. oh, can you help me? Because mm -hmm. you look like someone who can help me. Um, and in the beginning, when you're not taking very large projects that you have invoice, that you're invoicing on a monthly basis on a draw and hoping to collect a regular, man, these people pay instantly. You show up and you say, here's my price. I can do this. They give you a check. You immediately help them. Their problem is solved. Mm -hmm. You are the superhero and you go back with enough money to feed your family, get the electric bills paid and uh, put some money in the coffer left over. Um, so this is like from a, from a business starting standpoint, from an engineering firm standpoint. Yeah, you start off with this kind of stuff. And yes, we all want to get to a point where we're only chasing the big stuff that we like. But guess what? These people still need help. Sure. And um, obviously, I know Phoenix doesn't do a whole lot of residential work. That's OK. I would like to be there one day. Right. But I can't go there until I've got five or six people behind me being like, hey, we got you covered. We're now going to handle all this market. Dave, let's talk a minute on on your 12th point, which was key traits of a successful firm. So for you, you believe that building that relationship and building that long term is not only good for you and for your customer, but good for society as a whole. Can you talk about some of the important parts of building and the key traits of a successful firm? I can only speak to my own experience on this, and I would expect that other people would have way more uh, aspects of this. One of the key aspects that has made my firm successful is giving customers what Tony Robbins would call a wow experience. Now, again, you've already mentioned this already. That bar is really low right now. It's extremely low. Uh, it's so low, in fact, that I answer my phone and people say, wow. We called eight other engineering firms and were told that we would get a call back maybe in four weeks. You answered your phone? I said, yeah, I answered my phone. I will never work for a client who doesn't need me. Mm -hmm. Um, and that means some people call up and they just say, well, I need a structural engineer. And I say, okay, well, what do you have going on? And I had an old woman tell me, um, well, I'm moving a piano that I'm inheriting from my aunt into my house and I'm putting it on my living room floor. I need an engineer to assess my floor. And I said, uh, lady, what, what size piano are we talking? She said, it's a Steinway C. I said, okay. So a Steinway C is 750 pounds. That's three fat people. Would you call an engineer to have three fat people stand in your living room? And she said, no. And I said, well, then you don't need an engineer. Enjoy your piano. It's going to be fine. Um, she went on to write a review for me and went on to recommend me to other people. And the reputation was that I'm not in the business of ripping people off. And people who do need me and value what I do are going to pay for me to take care of them. So answer, you know, answer your phone. Show up when you say you're going to show up deliver when you say you're going to deliver and you will have no shortage of people clamoring down your door saying we want you next so dave um one of the last and to me is kind of one of the most important parts and that's paths for growth so that's growth i'm assuming not only as your firm and your company and your bank account but you as a person as well can you speak to that for a minute well paths for growth Growth involves stepping out into an unknown space, and it's a space that we know we need to go, but sometimes, well, it's unknown. You know, we don't have the guideposts and uh, we don't have the uh, 
you know, the, 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 the lamp to, you know, guide our feet at, at all times. Uh, but there are paths to growth and there are paths to growth that's sustainable. Um, when I think of growth for a business, I think in first and foremost, um, growth of the engineer's ability, growth in his scope to help people. Because um, that's really what, again, that's what we're here about. You can be a successful engineer and only work these little residential projects and help everyone in your community. And that's great. But what if you could also help people in other communities? What if you could help people in other professions? What if you became a community leader who was able to help people all throughout your community, all throughout your state, and even all throughout the nation? In fact, this very thing that I'm doing right now is about growing my impact into people all across the nation. Why I'm talking with you, Zane, right now is because I know you have a wider reach than I have. And if I really want to help people, I can say, stay at home and reinvent the wheel. Or I can just say, hey, Zane's already got four wheels built. Mm-hmm. Can I just hop on for a little bit, just for a little bit? Yeah. And I, you know, we'll work something out. You know, Bring that's an engine my... and an extra gas tank along with you. And let's go further go. together, right? Yes. Dave, man, it's been absolutely amazing. I can't believe how fast the time went by. Um, I just wanted to first off uh, appreciate your time and spending a few moments with me. Mainly, I just want to recognize you for how amazing you are, how cool it is what you're putting together here, how important what you're doing and the people you're going to help, how important it is for the whole grand scheme of engineering and life and everything that's around us. So I wanted to appreciate you. Thank you and recognize you. I really appreciate you being here. Um, any final words or thoughts before we get out of here for the day? Let me just say that, you know, the opportunity to be here with you finally giving back. I wouldn't be here without you, man. It's your vision that that gave me this vision. I didn't come up with this on my own. And I, it is my opportunity, I think, to to take a seed that was planted a long time ago and just and watch it and watch it bear fruit right now. To all you guys out there who are looking at different types of engineering, go where your heart is. And you can be successful at anything if you have the drive uh, and the passion to go with it. Don't ever sell yourself short. 100%. All right. Thank you, brother. I'm Zane with Zane Engineers Life, and we'll make you better.